Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to take a quick look at Flaming Cliffs 3. I think it's one of the most highly underrated modules for DCS for beginners, and uh, some veterans even still find that flying the F-15C and the SU-27 flanker is still fun. I see a lot of guys on some of these uh, DCS videos using the F-15C and the SU-27 for uh, multiplayer all the time for dogfighting. Uh, so that has to say something about them. So here's what you get basically when you get Flaming Cliffs 3. Uh, a little bit of background about Flaming Cliffs 3. Flaming Cliffs 3 is essentially a natural progression from the DLC or add-on for the original lock-on modern air combat Lomac. Um, that was called Flaming Cliffs and then they came out with a Flaming Cliffs 2 and then from what I understand this was the early days of DCS um, you actually had to own I think Flaming Cliffs 2 to get the module Flaming Cliffs 3 and I guess eventually they did away with that and just sold it as Flaming Cliffs 3 as they do now and um, when it's not on sale it's $49.99 which I think is an incredible value um, because you do get the A-10A, the F-15C, the SU-27, the MiG-29, and the SU-25, which is the better version of the SU-25 than what they give you with the free uh, DCS. Basically, they say DCS is free to play, but they give you a crappy SU-27 or SU-25 and that uh, trainer um, Mustang that doesn't even have guns. So this is essentially the F-15C Eagle, beautiful plane. And I think we're looking for two TU-22 bombers that are up ahead. I'm going to switch. I'm going to extend my radar here. And it even has radar models, as you can see. So I'm moving around the TDC. And I have these guys at about almost 20 miles. On my RWR, they're coming up as uh, MiG-23s. So as you see, the systems are modeled just like they are in the uh, Hornet or the F-16. Uh, the main difference is that I can't click any of these uh, things in the cockpit. Now I'm getting the shoot cue. So I'm going to let one off the rail. And we'll see what we end up with here. Now, granted, like I said, the you can't click any of the stuff in the cockpit. It just looks cool, which isn't a bad thing. I literally just switched to the proper HUD mode. Uh-oh. I forget where my chaff and flares are. Uh, that's probably not going to be good. Yeah, they are MiG-23s, so my RWR was correct. What I don't know is where my chaff and flares are. That's not it either. Yeah, that apex is not anywhere near me, so I'm not going to worry about it. Those two look like they're going to pass me. Boom. Got them. Now, these guys I'm worried about. Those don't look like they're going to get anywhere near me. And we're going to go for that MiG-23. Really? Ooh, there's an apex incoming. Well, he's going down. Shoot. I think I already got him. Yeah, he's damaged. Shoot. Shoot. But just for the hell of it. Okay, those are my to you. I don't see them on the radar on the RWR yet though. Let's open up the radar a little. What do we have up ahead here? 
Those are definitely red dots. TU-22s, that's what I'm looking for. Why aren't they showing up on radar? That's what I don't understand. But that's fine. Hey, wingman. Why don't you uh, go up there, engage, and kill that guy? And he's going to say, sure, why not, pal? Shoot. Shoot. And there's one. It's going to go down. Although these things are full of chaff and flares. Okay. Why am I... What I don't understand is why I don't have any speed. I have my throttle forward the whole time. There we go. I might have something not set up right in my uh, Flaming Cliffs 3 stuff, because I haven't done this in ages, but I should not be going that slow. 150 knots. This thing goes like 800. Let me just point my nose around, pick up some more speed. So that's the F-15. F-15 is pretty awesome. It's one of the most capable Flaming Cliffs aircraft there is. I love it. And the flanker is pretty much right up there with it. The flanker has a real nice helmet-mounted sight for uh, shooting missiles. It's pretty sick. So that should be mission accomplished, to be honest. Pull out a burn. Yep, first group of attackers been destroyed. Additional aircraft have been detected approaching from the northwest. So I could continue this mission if I wanted to, but I'm not. I just wanted to show you things. So I'm not going to spend the entire video doing that. But I did rather well. Four of eight planes, not bad. So let's go. That was the bomber intercept mission for the F-15C. We have a MiG-29 takeoff from Vazani. We've got a free flight over Krasnodar. Final approach, strike intercept. Let's just go for the free flight for a minute, because I just want to show you guys what the planes look like. And uh, I know I don't have everything set up in this one either. But this is the uh, MiG-29 cockpit, as one would expect. Everything moves around in there. You just can't touch the buttons and the dials, but, you know... Switch your weapon systems. I can go to the helmet mounted sight, and that gives me a limited range to outside of my HUD view lock onto something, which is pretty cool. And here's what she looks like from the outside beautiful model, just like the F 15. I mean, you don't get cheated on anything you know even though these are the not these aren't high fidelity modules the flight model is still high fidelity the you know effectiveness and range and how the weapons react and the the, the punch that they pack all that kind of stuff is still modeled you just don't get the pilot workload of a high fidelity module beautiful plane though so that is the MiG-29 and the high fidelity modules. You can still fly missions. You can still do the things that this plane would do. You just don't have the insane pilot workload. You know, you don't have to go through all those steps. SU-25, probably the least favorite plane out of all the planes that they have in this uh, simulation. And I don't think I have anything set up on this. Like nothing. I'm surprised the uh, throttle, yeah, the throttle and the stick work. Pedals probably not. Yeah, pedals aren't working. But again, looks really good. Doesn't look bad by any many means whatsoever. The model's great. Super fun stuff. I just got a lag spike for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. But that is the SU-25, which is the least, most least interesting, I guess. SU-27 bomber intercept, SU-33 carrier landing. So this is what you get if you own the default map. If you own the Persian Gulf map, you can come in here and you can pick uh, any of these free, any of these uh, 
instant action missions. The one I'm looking for is under regular missions. So if you own the basic map, this is all you get. If you happen to own Nevada, you get all this. If you happen to own Normandy map, you get all this. If you happen to own the Persian Gulf, you get all this. So they're, they're very generous with content. And I think my point is, is that the content in Flaming Cliffs 3 is probably the most content you're going to get anywhere in DCS in any of the modules. Um, I think they're generous because there's five different aircraft, but still, that's a lot to do. So you've got one versus one beyond visual range, one versus one guns, uh, MiG-29, everything from, you know, they, there's even cool missions in here where you do ground pounding in the flanker, you can fly under bridges. This is all the basic map. However, if you come over here to the Persian Gulf, you can do this SU-27 one versus one dogfight. And this is over Dubai, if you have the Persian Gulf map. And this is one of my favorite ones. This is kind of cool. You get the helmet-mounted sight in the SU-27, which they've had that for, you know, longer than what we've had it on NATO aircraft, you know? Like, you got the helmet-mounted sight in the Hornet. You got the helmet-mounted sight now in the F-16. But they've had it in the flanker forever, since like the late 80s, I believe. So let's jump into here, and this is going to be a one versus one versus an F-15. I'm going to bring up my sight. Oh, too slow. But I can still fire this from outside of the HUD range. All i got to do is lock him up. And, oh, that was close. And Dubai looks great, by the way. And the F-15C... Oh, he's not getting away from that one, I don't think. The F-15C and the flanker are both aircraft that still, today, people use online all the time competitively against each other because the flight models are what they are, because the F-15C has the crazy thrust-to-weight ratio that it has, because the flanker is as maneuverable and agile as it is, you know? There's definitely a use for the Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft still. I know a lot of people will argue that all day long they would never touch it with a 10-foot pole because it doesn't have the depth of the high-fidelity modules, but you can still have shit-tons of fun in these things, man. And why wouldn't you? It's just the most incredible value that you can get in DCS. Alright, let's bring this down. But definitely one of my favorite aircraft is the SU-27 and the F-15C. Yeah, I know. I'm going too fast and I'm going too low. Nice. And this thing hauls ass, too. And it looks good doing it. And who doesn't want to relive the days of flanker, you know? This is pretty much the only way you can do it. So that is the SU-27 one versus one. And then you can switch to the other side. And you can go one versus one dogfight over the Persian Gulf. And you're pretty much that F-15 that is on the other side of the thing. Oh, that's no good. Ooh. Ooh, it missed me, thank God. Oh, why am I going... What is wrong with my thrust? Something weird is going on today with these things. It's like I just didn't have enough thrust for a second. And these things have great thrust-to-weight ratio. Oh, that can't be good. Eject. He got me. Left fire. Well, the damage model's really good, too. Right See? 
that's something else you don't have to worry about with the Flaming Cliffs modules as well. Yeah, he got me good. Going in. Let's see, what else didn't I show you? Let's go back up. And these are mission missions, man. You get all this stuff. I'll show you the SU-33 guns only because just to show you the SU-33, basically the naval variant of the SU-27. I think it's got a little bit better thrust to weight ratio. You can land on carriers, take off carriers. Just the new and improved SU-27, I suppose. Come on. Won't head to head with the Tomcat. So it's got the, uh, I believe it's the difference is it's got the little canards in the front. Slightly bigger. I think it's slightly longer, too. Beautiful plane, though. This Tomcat's going to come back and just completely annihilate me. And hit the cans. Pretty cool stuff. And again, the cockpit, you know, looks like a flanker cockpit. Nothing super special, nothing terrible either, though. And then when you go back to campaigns, you've got a ton of stuff. So you go here, Flaming Cliffs, and I purchased the Red Flag and the Georgian War campaign separately for the F-15. But those were only like five bucks when they're on sale. But you get an A-10 campaign, you get an F-15 campaign, you get a MiG-29 campaign, you get two SU-25 campaigns, a single SU-27 campaign, an SU-33 campaign, and then another SU-33 campaign, which is on a carrier. So, super cool stuff, man. Like I said, this is probably the most, you know, content that you're going to get anywhere in DCS. The only thing I think that they could have done better is in the area of the training missions, they're pretty much only training you in the flanker, it looks like. Although you can do better and find a lot of this stuff online. So it's almost like training missions for the flanker, than the SU-33, but that's it. So that's the only area I think they're lacking in. Other than that, Flaming Cliffs 3 is on sale right now for 25 bucks. It's normally 50 bucks. Get that in like the Nevada map and you're set. Because yeah, if you go to Nevada, take the free flight in the SU-33, I think the desert terrain in Nevada looks even better than the Persian Gulf, but that's just me. Loading, loading. And pow, there we go. Such a pretty plane. And again, that's the nice part, like, you know, you get really nice detailed models. It's not like they skimped out and cheap out on you because you got Flaming Cliffs. And again, a lot of people will disagree with me. They'll say, you know, Flaming Cliffs isn't worth shit, blah, 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 let them. They're just people that don't know how to have fun. Or they're so, you know, so into their high fidelity modules that they don't believe anything else can ever be fun beyond sitting there for 15 minutes and going through the startup procedure which you don't have to do with these it's pretty much like wind left windows key plus home or something and automatic startup starts and you do sit there for about three or four minutes while the, all the systems start up but you know other than that your startup procedure in this i think is like turn the engines on what turn the engines on turn the power on close the canopy 
So it's only like a three or four step process, as I recall, which is reasonable. You still got a startup procedure. It's just not, you know, sit there for 15 minutes and have to do everything that you have to do in like the A10C or the Hornet, you know, or the F14. These are, you know, more point and shoot fun things, I think. Less time screwing around and more time having fun flying and, and shooting missiles and dropping bombs, you know. You know, the reason why we play these things to begin with. And again, like I said, you still get realistic flight models. You still get realistic weapons and damage modeling. What's not to like? Like I said, I never understood that hate for the Flaming Cliffs stuff by the community, you know. Oh, you're a noob if you like Flaming Cliffs. Bullshit. No, I just want to have fun. And don't get me wrong, I love the complexity of a high-fidelity module for the, the flight model and, and the weapon systems and learning how to do that. To, it is a challenge once you've went through and went through all the right steps to, you know, deploy that air-to-ground weapon, you know, to t lock on something at range with the radar, you know, and then switch to the next target, you know, or turn the radar off so you can sneak in there. But again, this is kind of the same thing, only a few steps removed, that's all. So, give it a shot, guys. Because like I said, I, I think the Flaming Cliffs 3 stuff is definitely well worth the price of admission. And when it's on sale for 25 bucks, my god, why not? I mean, at the very least, I would recommend the F-15C and the SU-27 to be in anybody's DCS library. Um... And they're on sale right now for I think seven fifty a piece instead of fourteen ninety nine. But like, if you're gonna go in and, and pay fifteen bucks for two planes and it's twenty five dollars for all five plus all the content you get with it, I just can't see not spending the extra ten bucks and getting the rest, you know. But at the bare minimum, the F fifteen C and the SU twenty seven flanker are definitely must haves for any DCS library, regardless of what the community wants to say and the diehards want to say. And at that price, why not? That's my point. So I'm going to leave it at that, guys. I'm not going to bore you anymore with my Flaming Cliffs 3 stuff. But I just wanted to show you guys, there's a lot of content in Flaming Cliffs 3. And uh, there's really no reason not to give Flaming Cliffs 3 a shot. It's actually really cool stuff. Especially if you love fighter planes. Why not? So I'm going to leave it at that, guys. As always, please subscribe to the channel. And until next time.